You scroll, you like, you post. But what if I told you that every tap on your screen is physically changing your brain? And not just your habits, your actual neural wiring. Social media isn't just influencing you, it's reprogramming you in ways you don't even notice. Today on The Gadget Grid, we're diving deep into the science of how social media is rewiring your brain and why you should care. Part one, the attention economy. You are the product. To understand what's happening to your brain, we have to start with the system that drives all of this, the attention economy. Social media platforms like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook make money by keeping you engaged. The longer you stay on the platform, the more ads you see, and the more valuable you are to advertisers. Your attention is being bought and sold. And to hold your attention, these platforms deploy a powerful weapon, dopamine, your brain's reward chemical. Every like, comment, share, or notification is a tiny hit of dopamine. Over time, your brain starts craving more. It's the same system that drives gambling addiction, except this time, the slot machine is in your pocket and it knows exactly how to keep you pulling the lever. Part two, the brain on social media dopamine hijacking. What we're talking about here isn't just distraction, it's neuroplasticity. Your brain is constantly changing in response to how you use it. This is called neuroplasticity, the ability of the brain to rewire itself based on experience. When you use social media repeatedly, the brain starts to form new neural pathways. You become more sensitive to likes, notifications, and novelty. Your reward system becomes rewired to prioritize instant gratification. In one study, MRI scans showed that people who use social media frequently had more activity in the nucleus accumbens, a key region for reward anticipation. In other words, just opening the app can trigger the same kind of brain response as winning a prize. But here's the catch. The more you use social media for dopamine, the less sensitive your brain becomes to natural rewards, like conversations, achievements, or time spent in nature. You're training your brain to crave the screen over everything else. Part three, memory, focus, and mental fog. Scrolling through short form content might feel like harmless entertainment, but it comes at a cognitive cost. Studies have shown that heavy social media use is linked to reduced attention span and weaker working memory. You're being trained to shift focus rapidly, post to post, video to video, without staying on one topic long enough to form deep understanding. This is called cognitive fragmentation. Your brain adapts to rapid switching, which means tasks that require sustained attention, like reading a book, solving a problem, or even listening in a conversation, become harder. And it doesn't stop there. Evidence also suggests that the more time you spend online, the more superficial your memory becomes. Because you're constantly consuming information, your brain becomes less likely to store it deeply. You're not remembering things, you're just temporarily holding them before swiping to the next hit. Part four, emotional wiring, anxiety, comparison, and dopamine withdrawal. Social media isn't just changing how you think, it's changing how you feel. Then, Social platforms are designed to showcase the highlight reels of people's lives. Over time, this triggers something called social comparison theory. You unconsciously compare yourself to others, often feeling inadequate or behind. This has serious emotional consequences. According to research by the Royal Society for Public Health, platforms like Instagram are linked to higher levels of anxiety, depression, poor body image, and sleep disturbances, especially among teens and young adults. What makes it worse is the dopamine withdrawal when you log off. After getting used to frequent bursts of digital stimulation, your brain finds ordinary life dull by comparison. This can lead to a flat, low energy state, almost like a hangover. And the algorithm doesn't help. It rewards content that is emotionally charged, outrage, envy, fear, because those emotions drive clicks and shares. Over time, you're not just becoming addicted to the app, you're being nudged into a more reactive, anxious, and dependent emotional state. Part five, the feedback loop. Your brain, their algorithm. The more you use social media, the more the algorithm learns about you. It tracks your watch time, likes, clicks, and even how long you pause on a video, even if you don't engage with it. Then it feeds you more of what keeps you hooked. If you interact with dramatic content, you'll see more drama. If you linger on negativity, the algorithm assumes that's what you want. 
And here's the scary part. Your brain adapts to whatever you consume most. If you're fed outrage, you become more reactive. If you're fed superficiality, your thinking becomes more shallow. If you're constantly exposed to curated perfection, your self-image can suffer. The algorithm shapes your feed, your feed shapes your brain, and your brain shapes your reality. Part six, the adolescent brain, vulnerable and unprotected. Nowhere is the impact of social media more intense than in the developing brain. Adolescents are especially vulnerable because their brains are still developing, particularly the prefrontal cortex, which governs decision-making, impulse control, and emotional regulation. At the same time, the limbic system, responsible for reward processing, is highly active during the teenage years. That means teens are hardwired to seek validation, peer approval, and novelty. All things social media is engineered to exploit. This creates a dangerous feedback loop. A developing brain gets flooded with dopamine rewards, while the systems needed to regulate that behavior aren't fully online yet. So out, studies have even shown structural changes in the brains of heavy teen social media users, particularly in areas linked to attention, emotional sensitivity, and self-control. Part seven, is it too late to undo the rewiring? The good news, neuroplasticity works both ways. Just as your brain can adapt to digital dependency, it can also recover if you take the right steps. Here's how you can start to take control. Digital fasting schedule time away from all screens. Even a few hours per day can restore focus and emotional regulation. Monotasking, train your brain to do one thing at a time. No switching tabs, no second screens. Feed your brain differently. Replace shallow content with deeper inputs. Books, long form podcasts, creative hobbies. Hey, notification detox. Turn off all non-essential alerts. Reclaim control over your attention. Sir, real world rewards. Rebuild your dopamine system by investing in activities that offer delayed but meaningful satisfaction, like learning a skill, exercising, or helping others. It won't be easy at first, but over time, your brain begins to stabilize. Focus returns, sleep improves, emotions level out. You begin to feel present again. Part eight, the bigger picture, reclaiming mental sovereignty. Your mind is your most valuable asset, but right now it's being rented out. Post by post, like by like, scroll by scroll. The more aware you become of how social media rewires your brain, the more empowered you are to resist it. That doesn't mean quitting everything. It means using it consciously. Follow creators who challenge your thinking, not just entertain it. Use social platforms to learn, not just to scroll. Set boundaries, reclaim time, take back your attention. Because here's the truth. Whoever controls your attention controls your future. And your brain wasn't built to be outsourced to a machine learning algorithm. Final thought. Social media isn't evil, but it is powerful. And it's changing you even when you think you're just scrolling. The question is, are you shaping your mind? Or is your feed doing it for you? If this video opened your eyes, hit that like button and subscribe to The Gadget Grid. We've got more deep dives coming your way every week. And let's hear from you. Have you ever caught yourself addicted to scrolling? What changed when you took a break? Share your experience in the comments.